gentleman called to order the April 1st, 2013 meeting of East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drainage District Number 1. Would everyone please stand for the prayer given by Councilman Todd Lambert and remain standing, please, for the Pledge of Allegiance. Todd. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here tonight to make some decisions for our citizens of this parish on our drainage. And we thank you for the weather that you've been blessed with us on it. And uh, may we access in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Ty. Um, Madam Secretary, uh, please note that I think Councilman uh, Sheik Snyder is on his way. Um, uh, Councilman Turner's not here. Councilman Melanson is not here, and Councilman Johnson's out of town t tonight. I want to uh, let all uh, let all the councilmen know that we're going to pull agenda item number nine from the from the minutes. Uh, Public comment period. Anyone wishing to speak on an agenda item, please sign in with the secretary and you'll be given some time when that agenda item comes up. We'll move on to agenda item number four, the acceptance of the minutes of the March 11th, 2013 meeting. So moved by uh, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert. Second. Second by Mr. Terry Cazzo. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. Under the chairman's report tonight, um, at the request of the administration and the council, we've, uh, we've asked for representatives from the Pontchartrain Levy District uh, to come forward and uh, give us a, an update and an overview of the Bayou Manchac project that's, uh, that's been in the works by the PLD for several years now, to try to get that settled and get it forward, uh, representing the Pine Strain Levy District tonight. We have Mr. L.C. Irvin. Uh, I don't think we have any other members in the audience right now, but I know Mr. Mike DeLone is on his way. And uh, to give the update, we have Mr. Les Waggis back with uh, CB&I Coastal Services, and they've been involved from the beginning of the project and used to be formerly Shaw Coastal Services. Les, do you want to come up and give us a little brief overview and an update? Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just give you some historical background and then just briefly summarize what, we, what we've done, the process we went through, and where we are today, okay? First of all, the problem. You have two problems there. You have headwater flooding and backwater flooding. Backwater flooding is potentially the greatest of the two problems, but both of them are problematic. The in 2001, Punch Train Levy District was the non-federal sponsor in conjunction with the Corps of Engineers to conduct a study of the problems on Bayou Manchac. And that included both the headwater flooding and backwater flooding problem. The study progressed until 2008. In 2008, Punch Train Levy District decided, well, because of the federal funding constraints and the study lagging over time, they decided that to pursue a Section 211 project. Section 211 of Word in 96 allows for a non-federal agency to plan, design, and construct a project and seek reimbursement from the federal government, which in theory is fine, but in reality, there's very little money to support that program, okay? As a result of that, Punch Train Levy District has decided to look for alternative funding options so that they can progress and actually construct the project. So that's what we've been doing for the last uh, couple of years, basically. In developing the plan under the 211 program, we had developed a tentative plan which included the following. The replacement of the floodgate at 
Frog Bayou and the floodgate at Alligator Bayou. At Alligator Bayou, there would be two floodgates instead of the one that you currently have. At Frog Bayou, you would replace it with one larger floodgate, according to the plan that we developed. In addition to that, we propose to dredge Alligator Bayou. Basically, over time, you have a lot of siltation that's, uh, that's accumulated in there. By the structure, you have approximately six feet that's accumulated over time, and it peters all the way back, <coughs> it taper, tapers off as you go back from there. In addition to that, we propose to acquire a small area. This was the structures were going to be remotely capable of being remotely operated, and for that, you, at the time that we evaluated it, you needed a tower, and we also needed a construction staging area. So we were going to acquire an area next to the alligator bayou structure to serve both purposes where, and then actually construct a small boat ramp for operational and maintenance purposes. There was another part of the project which actually would have put a structure in Bayou Man Shack and rerouted the lower end of Ward Creek. Back about 1960, East Baton Rouge Parish realigned and put a diversion from Ward, Ward Creek to dump into Bayou Manchac, okay? When they did that, they changed the distribution of flows roughly from 75-25 to 50-50. In other words, when you get a flood event, half of it goes towards the Spanish Lake area there up Bayou Manchac. The other half goes and flows down by your man shack towards the Amy River and gets out of the system. What happens there, of course, you got about a two or three day delay when you backwater, you, when you get a rainfall event, the water that falls in Mississippi takes about two or three days to get there. So what you have is you have a, a bump up when that water comes down the river, begins to back up. So you actually get a, and, and this, the water actually bumps back up. And this past, the beginning of the year, that's what happened when we had the flooding problems. Which you had a combination of headwater and some backwater getting there at the same time. So you had an extended period where, where the stages stayed up and created some flooding problems. The, uh, what we've been looking at, we've been trying to get some funding in the last couple of years, and we've tried a number of different potential opportunities for funding. We tried to get some FEMA money. We have gone to the state, CPRA, tried to get some money from them, capital outlay money, and to date we have not been able to secure any definitive funding. So that's why the project has kind of been in limbo for a while. More recently, after the last flooding event, we met with Bill Rue and talked about some options to take care of just the problem in Ascension Parish. The problem with that is there's some potential, if, you, if it's not done right, to create some problems upstream of that and have a, a minor impact on Alligator Bayou. So it has to be done very, very carefully. One of the options we looked at was the possibility of doing some besides replacing the structure, doing some channel improvement or clearing and snagging in Frog Bayou, putting some culverts under, I, think, I believe it's Ridge Road, and then lowering the, the spall bank levee to allow for when the stages get high in the Spanish Lake area to flow back through there and then come through the Frog Bayou structures eventually, okay? That concept could be made to work, but it's got a lot of refinement that needs to be done. That's just a concept that we talked about. The biggest problem that we would have, no matter what, is probably getting the 404 permit on either one of these proposals. The 404 permit, of course, is the wetlands permit from the Corps. And dealing with the Corps, having retired from there, I understand the Corps quite well, dealing with the core in the regulatory functions area, 
can sometimes be a challenge, as I think Ascension Parish well recognizes. So in summary, we're at a point now we have a plan, a plan that could work. It actually serves the purposes of helping Iberville Parish, East Baton Rouge, and Ascension Parishes. When the plan was developed, we looked at the, the regional perspective, trying to solve the problems, not looking at any particular one interest or one parish's interest. We tried to balance all of those interests, and that's how the plan was developed. So basically, that's where, that's where we are. It's a matter of finding money so that we can progress further. Uh, Punch Train and Levy District would welcome the opportunity to work with the parish in trying to f facilitate and move the project forward. Okay. All right, just a just kind of a synopsis there that, you know, on a, on a big project, uh, the Body Man Shack project that you've been working on, like I said, it is a three-parish issue, East Baton Rouge, Iberville, and Ascension. Correct. And uh, we're going to have to all come to the table at some point to make that work or some approvals by the Corps on behalf of somebody. And uh, the, the recent options on Frog Bayou is something that is, is probably something, it's a new type of thing that we're talking about. It, it's not in conjunction with everything else. And it is something that will have to be reviewed on whatever impact it does have on the other two parishes if Ascension Parish moves forward. Correct. All right. Um, I know the parish president has several questions for you, Les, and uh, so, Mr. Martinez. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank Les and the Shaw Group and certainly uh, the Punch Train Levy District for. Uh, Putting in, I remember when they started this in 2001, I was at the legislature, and that's how a lot of it got started. But it's something that as time goes on, we hear the same thing. There's no funding, no funding, no funding. We put in for all kind of federal funding. We went this, the, the word of bill passes or that. Uh, but basically, in talking to Les earlier, there's very a very minute chance that we would ever get any federal funding for this project. Is that, that correct? So basically, we need to look at, at the other two parishes. We need to sit down, hopefully can come to the table, and look at this project. It's a $10 million project. Uh, it was when you studied it, uh, basically. Uh, you know, with some help from PLD and uh, Ascension Parish, I mean, we were going to spend uh, probably $3 million if we do this project on Frog Bayou. Uh, right. You know, that's something that we, we can certainly look at. Uh, that would cover almost a third of the project uh, if we could get PLD to put up a third and maybe the other two parishes to put up uh, even three million, a million and a half each, or some kind of funding mechanism. Because, I mean, we can sit here for the next 20 years and the problem's going to be the same. There's no funding. There's no funding. And if that doesn't work, I mean, I think that at that point we need to pursue what we need to do and take care of what we need to do in our parish. I mean, I'd love to work in conjunction with the other parishes. It's just a lot of things that happened over the years. Uh, in the 20s when they built the levee, uh, they blocked off uh, the free-flowing water coming into uh, the Spanish Lake area, Alligator Bayou, and all Frog Bayou area, and all along the uh, Bluff Road. So bottom line is that uh, by doing that, uh, they created a, a problem that, that the core basically created by putting the levee, but of course there's a lot more benefits by not having to flood every year when the Mississippi River comes up. So there's a lot of things that we can look at. But I think it's going to take uh, some sort of a cooperative effort between the Corps, the three parishes, and uh, to get this done. But my point is it's time that we quit talking, time that we quit studying, and it's time to do something. And I think that the residents... Uh, in the entire basin deserve better than what they've gotten in the past. And I mean, I know that everybody's tried uh, to, to look at this project, but again, it comes down to funding. I know that we and you as, as a drainage board are willing to put up your fair share, if not more, if we could bring the other two parishes to the table and discuss this issue. So what I'm gonna ask at this point is to see if we can get a meeting 
And in the near future, not wait two years, three years, maybe in the next, uh, hopefully a couple months, and sit down with the other two parishes and see if we can come up to an agreement with Punch Train Levy District. And I'm going to ask the Punch Train Levy District if they could facilitate this meeting and uh, maybe call it and uh, see if we get any cooperation. And if not, I think uh, give it a couple of months. If it doesn't happen, then we need to pursue what we need to pursue as a parish and do what we need to do. Well, we know that uh, the events of the last year, what we've had is, uh, you know, basic almost collapse and failure of the Frog Bayou Lock that we've had to go in and do an emergency repair on that. We know the issues we ran into on that. And, uh, you know, the second round of uh, we do what we got to do for the people of Ascension Parish. We had to put some temporary pumps in there and pump some water across the road, and now we've got some pipes, and, we, we, you know, we've had to do it again. So this is definitely an issue that we we've committed to. And uh, like I said, I know you don't speak on behalf of the PLD, and definitely you don't you know you don't speak on behalf of the other two parishes. But I would like that if we could take a look at the major plan and integrate that into what we've got to do. And like Tommy said, within you know a minimum of two months, get some kind of input. See if somebody's going to come to the table and work with us. And then we'll start working on our own plan. Any questions? Yes, Ms. Cazzo. I want to thank you, Randy, and, and the members of this council, and Mr. Martinez, for, and you, sir, for the efforts on behalf of the members of my constituency, my, my little community. But I, I also want to ask, how realistic is it that there's going to be any cooperation from Iberville Parish or East Baton Rouge Parish? And you know, can we, if we think that's unrealistic to expect, can we just move forward with our own plan? Do we have to go jump through these hoops? I mean, I know it might be the courteous thing to do, and if you tell me that it's the courteous thing to do, then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. But if it is just a, a thankless endeavor, then we might as well move forward. I can answer part of that. Okay. Being in the fire for a little while is it's not just a courteous thing, you know. And uh, which we have, we've offered up several times, is the fact that whatever we do at the Frog Bayou, Alligator Bayou area mm -hmm. affects uh, three parishes, like Les said, the water coming up, water going down. Right. And, uh, but I do believe this, my time in here, is that we have minimal impact, okay? That's what I believe. And I, I believe that we have uh, a contingency plan should we go away from the major plan that with an option that we can get the job done for the people in that area without, with minimal impact on the people outside of that. What's our legal status where that's concerned? I mean, can, can we move from a, from a plan that's comprehensive to a more local one without problems? Yeah, I mean, we're not, we're not by any law, basically what we'd have to do is get permits from the core. That's, right. That would be the, the main problem and, uh, you know, with or without, we can start uh, making presentations to the Corps on this plan and meeting with them to see what their thought process uh, would be. So uh, we can move forward immediately with that and, and, mm -hmm. and discussing the, the, the new the plan that we're talking about for Ascension Parish. We can start talking to them at this point. That won't hurt a, a thing. I would appreciate if we could do that. If we could start a parallel track here where if we get to the end of the road a couple of months from now and and we can't that, come to some kind of resolution with the three parishes. That's almost that are, a guarantee that that's going to be done. Okay. Good. And we, what we work on is the type of permit we work on, and uh, Les can explain it more, or Bill, is that when we have an emergency, we work under the full four. And uh, that's, I don't know, Les, what's the summary of the full four? It's like a maintenance type emergency. Uh, Depends on how how the core looks at, at, right. at what you're doing. We have, that's, yeah. but that's the general what we. Do the more the you can for. couch on the maintenance, the better off you are, and better, the more likelihood you are to get a a permit without any constraints. Right. Yeah. Well, I certainly have no desire for for us to create a problem for somebody else in Ascension Parish or any other parish. But at the same time, I would appreciate seeing a, a two track going on so that we can move this forward as quickly as possible. If you would like, I will be glad to try to facilitate a meeting of the three parishes. I, I would appreciate that, Les. And uh, 
uh, stay in touch with Tommy and, and Bill and myself and uh, when you can get that set up and we may have some other parties that are on this board that might want to sit in on that. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Todd. And, and I think a reason and we want the other two parishes to come in is mm. to help finance. I don't know if we have $10 million in the budget to take off and move forward with this project right now. You know, I know there's a lot of capital money that's already plan you know I don't know how much money is allocated for Spanish Lake right now we go ahead Tommy but we don't well, I think we, we basically we got, got about two and a half million dollars uh, for the frog Bayou improvements uh, so that part is not a problem that's already in the budget so if we want to move forward with that I mean we, we put that in our plan the parish plan but I'm sure that if if need be we can uh, look at the possibility of uh, putting in some more dollars. Now, I don't think we can put $10 million in, right. but uh, hopefully if we could get a cost-sharing agreement uh, with the other parishes or with PLD or with the Corps or with, with, with anyone that would be willing to participate. But I think we need to explore those options, but I, I don't know how realistic they really are. So we may want to look at, a, at seeing what the maximum we could put up and then maybe uh, talking to PLD and see what they could do and Hopefully some of the other parishes will come up with something if we want to look at the overall plan. I think the overall plan is the best plan mm -hmm. for the entire region. Right. I think it's, uh, you know, something that we would all benefit from, and I think it's the right thing to do. But, again, we can't take the whole burden uh, upon ourselves uh, to do that. You know, other parishes have concreted their canals and uh, as Les said uh, did some diversion uh, projects with Ward Creek that uh, had some effect on us in the past and uh, basically what happens is the water comes down from East Baton Rouge Parish uh, we close the gates uh, we have to wait for all that water to go out then we open the alligator bayou locks and we have to wait for that water to go out and then basically the frog bayou people are at the end of the uh, spectrum here so we have to wait for the other two parishes to drain before we can actually drain that area. So anyway, that's kind of what we need to look at. But I'd love to see uh, some cooperation, and I'd love to see this entire project move forward uh, without having to depend on any federal or state money. Yeah. And just talking about the funding on our capital side, as, as we whittle down and get the narrow, the narrow end of the, uh, the major projects, such as the... Uh, Marlboro pump station expansion and, uh, you know, get through the major hurdles and, and get completely out the ground on the uh, Henderson Bayou, then, then, and a lot of the ifs are out, and, you know, and uh, we feel like we've budgeted good in both those. Uh, we should be hearing something within the next couple of months on the Law Ridge Levy extension, and we'll get a, we'll get a solid dollar figure on that. And uh, I know Mr. Elsie's here with uh, with the, uh, Parts train levy district, but we've got a good contingency of folks uh, from Ascension Parish on the on the PLD, and uh, <clears throat> and Mr. Wilson uh, willing to work with us every time we've met with him on issues we have. Um, so we can take we can take a look, and we we might could scrape up more than two, the two and a half that we had we had set forward for that. And uh, keep in mind that the events of the last year and the emergencies that has whittled some decent money out of our out of our general fund for all the emergencies okay and just as it does DPW any other department within the parish in these hurricane emergencies and uh, we would like to just like everybody else and that's why the administration so hard pressed on this right now to get some some permanent end to the to the solution to the problem rather than going out and getting emergency uh, emergency moves every now and then. Well, I thank you again. Thank you, ma'am. And the administration yes. very much. Go ahead, Mr. Sadler. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Mr. Waggis Pack, thank you so much for coming here this afternoon and uh, for your uh, historical report. And also, I would like you to know I appreciate your willingness to set up and facilitate this tri parish meeting. Um, I would certainly sanction the same. I need just a little bit of education, though. Uh, in, in your uh, report, you said that before the um, East Baton Rouge Parish Diversion Project, um, we had essentially, I believe you said, a 75%, 25% split of this water flow um, to the Spanish Lake area and, and, and to the, the Meat River eventually. Which of these secondary water bodies was getting the 75% of water before 
that diversion project that we now have the 50-50 split. It ba basically, about 75 percent went to the Amy River. Which was which is more Large appropriate river. place for it to go. That, that's how it gets out and eventually right. gets in the Lake Morapon. So essentially, you know, and I'm not picking on our neighboring parishes before we have this meeting. That would not be wise, but that, that produced a problem then, a problem we didn't, all of us didn't have. Agree. The, okay, uh, That's, uh, just seeking information. It, it, it was back, back in those days, you had a lot less development, and people were not too concerned about it because there wasn't any development there. Yeah, but there's a lot of but, development there but, now. But now it's district, a whole different and... ball game. Right. Because you have a lot of people that are impacted. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Bill, maybe you can help us with this. And the only flag I have on this, what levy you're talking about breaching to to accommodate or maybe have a some type of free flow? What what were you talking about? It's it's not really breaching it. All you're doing is lowering it in a in a segment in the upper portion of it, furthest away from from Bayou Man Shack. And basically what that that it was more like a weir. So that when you get water above a certain elevation, say elevation eight, it, right now at about elevation nine, that whole area becomes one big water body. So if you lower that, then you would allow the top part of the water body to drain through the new frog body structure, right? Well, Essentially. don't based, we have the culverts? Based on the information that the uh, from what's happened over the last several months really the fact of the matter is uh, the uh, we already have a topping of that levy at eight and a half right and just a few facts fact one Iberville Parish or Spanish Lake floods Bluff Swamp Bluff Swamp do not flood Spanish Lake water comes down we the Bluff Swamp is the lowest point in that whole basin <laughs> Water from uh, Everville Parish comes to Bluff Swamp. If and, and what happened in this last uh, uh, event is the fact that it did top topple uh, the levee, filled up Bluff Swamp, and we had the inability to drain Bluff Swamp because of the high level in Manchac, which forced us to put pumps there to get the elevation down. Because if we could not have gotten the ele elevation down, the storage area, uh, freeboard area in that basin would have been not enough to keep the people from flooding on Ridge Road. And that's why we had to necessitate the, the pumping. We got to keep a low level in Bluff Swamp. Alligator Bayou, you need to keep a low level. But if you think about our people, we got to think about Bluff Swamp. How do we keep that free board space? And the only way we can do it, again, thinking about just our people, uh, is to keep the water from Iberville from crossing over. Now, preferably if we could keep the elevation down in all the basin, Spanish Lake and Bluff Swamp, ideal. But to do that, we have to keep an extremely low level in, blo in both basins. Uh, part, and, and I think Wes can, uh, can account for this, when we were talking with East Baton Rouge, one of the things, they did not want to do the Walsh Creek improvement. Mm -hmm. The other thing that they did not want, or they, I guess they kind of mandated, to go along with this project was to allow us or mandate that we change our operational uh, uh, conditions of the Frog Bayou locks and uh, Alligator, Alligator Bayou, Bayou locks also. and allow a, an elevation to back up into that basin of about at least a seven before we shut the locks. And that's Damn to give work. them storage area into our basin. But what happens then is this fills our basin up and we get rainfall, we flood. And we already said that we cannot allow the elevation to get to seven. In fact, the last two events has gotten to five and six before the locks that I gave by was shut. And that caused a major problem in those two basins. So again, if there are issues that we have to resolve to move forward with the three parish uh, plan, and I think that's the best way to go, like the parish president says, but we ultimately got to look at our people and what hurts our people. And if we can do a, a parish wide, I mean, a three parish plan that benefits everybody and don't hurt anybody, that's the way we need to go with it. So that's really what's been happening. Thank parish. you, Bill, for explaining that. And that's what I wanted to make sure that it was clear to everyone what was going on, because there was a lot of questions about that. Thank you. 
Thank you, fellas. If uh, I just wanted to let that take place. We have one speaker that uh, is here on this subject uh, that would like to speak. Mr. Hansel Reva. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. I, uh, I didn't quite know the direction that this conversation would go. And uh, as is pretty obvious by some of the things said, it's been on the agenda for a long time. And uh, it sounds like you guys are doing a lot of work, you know, on behalf of the people that I'm kind of representing, I guess, from Ridge Road, mm -hmm. Becker Ridge. And uh, I know it's easy to talk about, and it's, 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 it takes a lot of work to get all this done and, and the approval processes and everything. But, you know, I think these last couple of rain events kind of redefine what's normal. You know, our parish has grown, you know, just extensively in the last couple of years. And what used to take 10 or 12 inches of rain now, just three or four inches of rain makes an awful mess. So, uh, you know, uh, I, like I said, you know, Mr. Tommy had spoke on how uh, things are moving now and, and it's our intentions to get something done, something on whether it's using, you know, uh, uh, trying to get it, the other parishes involved or if, it, if we're just going to do what we got to do to take care of our people. And uh, it sounds like the plans are in motion. I just wanted to give a big thanks to Mr. Rue and, and Ms. Terry and, and our, our parish president. I know it's, it's a lot of work, but uh, a lot of people appreciate the effort. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Secretary, please note that Councilman Shakes not as president and has been probably for a while. Mr. President, you got anything else on this subject, sir? No, sir. Thank you. I want to thank Les and PLD for showing up tonight and coming. Appreciate it. Any any other? Thank you, Les. Thank you, Mr. Elsie. We'll move on to agenda item number six, drainage report, Mr. Roof. Yes, sir. Um, they're handing out just a brief on the. Uh, Cap most of the capital improvement projects. I'm going to go through it real quickly. Morgan Borough Pump Station, 98 or better complete, substantial completion is expected this month, uh, maybe in a couple of weeks. And then we have to go through a punch list and everything else, but uh, at least we get to that point. Henderson Bayou floodgate project is about 65% complete. Uh, pouring the concrete for the pump station and the floodgate walls right now. And uh, the wet weather during the winter uh, caused some delays, a good amount of delays on the west side levy uh, construction and we're going to be coming uh, to the count to the commission next month probably with uh, more information about that and how many uh, days of uh, delay that the uh, flooding caused on that uh, project. Law Ridge levy extension, the preliminary engineering proceeding, uh, the survey in this potentially, uh, potentially for the potential right is completed uh, meeting with the, uh, the Corps of Engineers regulatory section for pre-project notification is in progress. I believe GSA had at least one, maybe two meetings with them already, keeping them informed. Scheduling a uh, meeting right now with the GSA engineers, uh, with the administration to go over uh, the status, the route itself, and, um, and settle some issues on that project. Uh, after that's done, we'll be scheduling a uh, meeting with the public of that area, public hearing. Uh, to go over the project with the people that's, uh, that will be involved or impacted by it mm -hmm. and get their concerns and uh, comments for the project. And then we'll start moving forward with that. Bluff Swamp, uh, of course, we just went through all of that. But uh, as per the parish president, we're going forward with the local plan just in case. At least we get the, a lot of the issue, the plan itself documented and mapped, uh, do some preliminary uh, um, meetings with the Corps of Engineers on permitting if, in fact, we cannot get a, um, a three-pairs or partial levy district uh, combined effort on that. At least we'll get the, the, the preliminary stuff over with and we have something in place to go forward if we need to. Uh, sandbagging system. We put out our specifications. It'll be a custom-built sandbagging operation that uh, we're bidding out. Uh, it's being advertised right now. We should have results of that in several weeks. And hopefully, it's going to have to be especially built, but uh, it's, so, we'll have it in in a couple of month, months, I hope. Yeah. Uh, Muddy Creek drainage improvements, uh, that's that, uh, the FEMA project. The contract with Volker Engineers for engineering design has been executed, and uh, notice proceed is given today. Panama Canal, Conway Bay improvements, 
RFP for snagging and clearing is being advertised. <coughs> GSA engineers proceeding with the Corps of Engineer permitting procedures, and GSA engineers is reviewing and updating hydro hydrologic models uh, of this basin to determine the benefits of redefining the the uh, lower channel drainage into Blind River. And uh, we want to get more information on exactly the effects of it and how much benefit that will afford the parish before we move to the next step. And again, as far as your major drainage operations, that would be work order system. You have your uh, district by district information. Go over it. If you have any concerns, please contact our office tomorrow. Be glad to go through it with you and answer any questions. That concludes Thank my sir. report, sir. Any questions for Mr. Rue? Thank you, sir. We'll move along to agenda item number seven, a resolution in support of Senator Vitter's bill to amend the Federal Water Resource Development Act. Uh, this is something that came to us and we want to, uh, that Senator Vitter has uh, going forward and we, we want to support him. Uh, I sent, I uh, basically copied everybody on an email and uh, the Secretary's handing out a draft of that, um, that resolution in support of this and the, the gist of this thing is to cut some of the bureaucracy out of the, uh, out of the core permitting process to allow local government more latitude to, uh, in performance based on using local monies and especially when no federal monies are involved to expedite the permitting process because you know we just spoke a while ago we've got a project that we feel like we can help the people of Ascension Parish and we know that no matter if it's a one parish three parish whatever it is we still got to get the cores permitting process in place and get an approval I'll make that motion now Mr. Chairman Second. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert, second by Mr. Chris Lohr. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Shake Snyder. Yes, Mr. Chairman, could you, you, you want to read the? I'll read yeah, it. Yeah, because I, I think it's important for sure. the people to know what okay. it is. Uh, basically, this resolution is whereas the Board of Commissioners of the East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drainage District Number 1 was created by the legislature and is commissioned with providing flood protection on the east bank of the Mississippi River within the parish of Ascension and whereas essential to this mission is the ability to get the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers regulatory permits more efficiently than presently occurring and whereas East Ascension Gravity Drainage District Number 1 has funds to invest as local share of federal funded projects and whereas East Ascension Gravity Drainage District Number 1 can manage local flood projects manage local flood protection projects more effectively and at a lower cost if funds and project management are given direct directly to the parish with limited U.S. Army Corps of Engineer participation and whereas Senator David Vitter's proposed legislation to revamp the Federal Water Resources Development Act will provide provisions that will greatly enhance our ability to perform our, perform our mission by lessening review and environmental impact periods and allow for local agencies to apply for and take the lead in flood protection projects. Now therefore be it resolved for the reasons cited above that East Ascension Consolidated Gravity Drainage District Number 1 Board of Commissioners are hereby in full support of Senator Vitter's proposed legislation as part of the reauthorization of Federal Water Resources Act Development Act. Any all. questions? Any opposition? Yeah. Resolution moves forward. Madam Secretary, uh, please get with the administration on where the, the, the copies of all the copies of this needs to go out to our local, state, and federal delegation. Move on to agenda item number eight, change order number four, Max Foot Construction, Marvin Bro Pump Station Expansion Project, Spare Bay, Coffer Dam Protection. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir, over the last several months, uh, and I think I went over it with some of the council members that attended the, uh, the little uh, expedition to the uh, flood station last week. The um, 
fact is, the number uh, seven bay is a spare bay, has no uh, impeller and no pump or, or, or right. mechanical uh, uh, things there right now. And the fact is, and we didn't discover until several months ago, that if at the completion of the project, all the coffer dam is, is to be removed by the contract, as per the contract. If we remove that portion of the coffer dam that, that's in front of Delma 7 Bay, and the council will, uh, ever decides to put a pump in that, it has to be coffer dam over again at a very costly, uh, um, uh, a very high cost and a lot of trouble. Uh, right now, if we have a change order, let uh, Max Foot uh, do this work. While they got the equipment there, they can leave the existing, uh, most of the existing uh, sheet piles in place, turn the sheet piles and actually connect it to the center wall of that pump state of that bay and connect it there and actually keep that uh, fairly waterproof uh, for the future if, we, in fact, uh, the council needs to put an uh, extra pump in. It can stay there for many, many years like that with no, uh, no problem. The cost is about $93,066 of that, though $68,000 is just purchasing the, uh, the sheet piles that's in place, because that's a leased uh, item right now. So just to buy it from the, the company that provided them will cost $68,000. So for $93,000, we'd probably save a million or two, or two uh, on uh, the effort that would be needed to dewater that in case we need to add another pump. So we're asking for authorization to uh, change for change order number four, the contract between East Decision Gravity Drainage District and Foot Construction, Marvin Broke Pump Station so Expansion. Second. So, we have a motion by Mr. Shakes, not a second by Mr. Sadley. And Mr. Roof, we are still in within budget on this project. Yes, sir. Now, Doing good. A good contractor, a good engineering firm. Uh, everything went well. And just to make clear that uh, the engineering firm, BKI, has checked into this and that the, uh, the keeping that Seventh Bay dry will not interfere with the uh, hydraulics of that that pump station. The actual the design is uh, is from Burke Klein Peter uh, for right. this retrofit. Thank you, sir. Any further discussion? Any opposition? Motion passes. Mr. Shake Snyder, we had said at the beginning of the meeting we're gonna uh, we're gonna defer on agenda item number nine. Let's just to bring you up to date. We'll move on to agenda item number 10, uh, acceptance of the low qualified quote, demolition of uh, single family residence, HM, HMGP project number 1603-005-0002, Mr. Roof. Now, quotes were received for this project and the lowest qualified quote was from expert maintenance for the amount of $10,825. We ask for authorization to uh, uh, authorize the professional service contract between East Decision Gravity Drainage District Number One Expert Maintenance for the demolition of one single-family residence HMGP project number 1603-005-0002 under terms and conditions in the FEMA East Decision Gravity Drainage District Number One contract for federally funded projects and authorize President Tommy Morton to sign and execute all necessary documents. So moved. Have a motion by. Mr. Todd Lavin, second by Mr. Terry Cazzo. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Uh, Sadley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bill, any chance that there isn't any asbestos involved in this project? Part of the contract is the, uh, the um, contractor has to, to go in and establish the fact of, of uh, the presence of uh, asbestos. If, though, if it is, then a, a, uh, that part of the contract kicks in and some we have to go through the process of getting uh, subs to uh, give us proposals on that. That will be evaluated, and then uh, the firm will be picked to go in and actually do that. That's the responsibility of the contractor before he starts work, though. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sadley. And just to let everybody in the public know that this, this, uh, this fame of venture here is 100% uh, reimbursable to the parish if we handle our business right. Anyway, any opposition? Motion passes. We'll move on to agenda item number 11, change order number one, BJM construction, Manshack, Lake Drive, drainage improvements. Mr. Rue. Yes, sir. This uh, construction project was uh, actually given out last year, but because of the amount of rain during the winter, the contractor was not able to get in there. 
uh, it's in Manshack Plantation on um, Manshack Lake Drive. What well, it is, some huge covers, underground drainage system that goes between the houses from the road to the drainage uh, ponds or actually to Bayou Manshack. We've been having a problem many, many years up here with uh, failures in that system. This particular place, uh, it's a major subsidence and some sump holes uh, developing. We were filling it with concrete and, and dirt as much as possible, but we really need to get in there and do a full repair. Contract was let on this project last year. Uh, the Again, because of the wet weather, could not uh, start the project. In addition to that, since that time, new failures just a, a few feet down from where the contract failures are has developed. And for the cost of, uh, we had the contractor look at it, and for the cost of, uh, I think, $2,400, He's agreed to, when he start the project, to go further down while he got his equipment there, excavate that area so we could determine exactly what's the problem and come up with, with a uh, suitable uh, repair for that. And he's also asking for, and we agree to uh, extend the time for 180 days, both because of the wet weather and to do this extra work. And we have tracked the weather, and we're in agreement with this uh, number of days. Motion to approve. Change order. Motion by Mr. Sadley, second by Mr. Dempsey Lambert. Bill, this old racetrack, uh, or this not part of that? No. Okay. No. This is, uh, again, this is off of Old Parker, right in the curve. That's another one. Manchat Plantation. Up to there. All right. Any discussion? Any opposition? Motion passed. We'll move on to agenda item number 12. Mr. Lambert. Motion to adjourn. Jeff. We have a motion by Mr. Todd Lambert to adjourn. Second. We have a second by Mr. Chris Floor. Any discussion? Any opposition? We are adjourned.